DaVinci Resolve 20 is new, it's exciting, it's flashy, it's packed with features, but with so many new shiny things, there are plenty of things that can fall through the gaps. In this video, I'm going to talk about some things you might have missed. One or two of these will kind of be notes on my previous general overview of all the new exciting stuff. One thing I kind of got wrong, the other I want to just share a little bit more about. One thing I plan to show off, but just spaced on apparently. Just a whole handful of things that I felt merited a follow-up. So let's, let's hop in. The first thing has to deal with compound clips. And this was something I also saw specifically requested that is now here. If I come to the beginning of this compound clip and right click open in a timeline, you might notice that my playhead is in about or exactly the exact same position as it was on the outside of the compound clip. And if I go back and come to the end of this compound clip, and open that up in a timeline, hey, we are at that same position. The position of your playhead stays synced when you open up a composition in a new timeline. If you have a very complicated compound clip, this could absolutely save you a lot of time hopping around and hunting for the exact moment that you were just at, that you had just found previously. Small update, but super nice. The next thing is something I haven't seen anyone else talk about, and it's not in any of like the published documents or anything. I kind of found it myself, <laughs> and it has to do with this right click paste attributes option. If I do something like toss an effect on this one little clip I have here, and then I move it down into the corner and say I want to paste this effect with those changes I made onto these other clips. If I copy that clip once, I'm doing control C and I'm using alt V as my paste attributes. I can't remember if I changed that keyboard shortcut or not. But you can always, but you can always right click. But if I do that paste attributes, I'll get this paste attributes pop up. You can select the individual attributes. Like if you have keyframes for position on different clips, but you want them to all scale the same, you can do that. A lot of times I just want everything. So I will just click this to add everything and I will click apply. But if I go to another clip and I do that again, I get that same pop up. I need to again, click here and then click here. If I wanted to do that for all of those, that could get tiring. One thing you kind of can do is that you can select multiple clips. And if you go through this process, it will do that on both of those clips. But if I just undo some of that, yeah, some of that on all of those, I make sure this is copied and I go paste that attributes once. I select all of them. We have a new option down at the bottom. Don't show until next copy. If I click this, it will save those attributes from that one clip and whatever options I selected here, if I click apply, it will paste that once. But then if I select that next clip and I just hit my keyboard shortcut to paste attributes, it does it. I don't need to re-select any of that. Next clip, on it, next clip, on it, next clip, on it, next clip, on it. Again, you can always paste attributes on multiple clips at once, but especially if you go through that process, but then you need to make a new one later. You can imagine situations where this will be really nice and just save you those clicks, especially on that same sort of monotonous, like back and forth, like you're clicking the same things. Now we have a toggle for that. The next is an effect I was I was confused about at first, and that is this multi-text effect. What clicks for me is that this is great as an edit page effect. I work a lot in the Fusion page. It's not that hard to just toss multiple text plus effects into a timeline onto your node tree and make them all work nice together. But if you want lots of text going on in one frame, it is much nicer just to have that living on one layer on your edit page timeline. So here I rigged up, I have those multiple layers which I can toggle on or off. I have a title, a subtitle, which I changed uh, different fonts for those. These title and subtitle are these point layouts, but the sort of bulk here, I changed to a text box layout. So if I pull up the box for that, you see it's a little offset here because I actually changed the position of this after the fact on the edit page. So this position is happening all natively on the edit page, whereas on the title itself, it's still kind of centered because we don't have you know a unified transform controls for the entire multi-text node. But I have this uh, text box, which you can always adjust here, do stuff like that. And don't forget a version or two ago, if I go to this title, you can, as long as this fusion overlay is selected, just click right in here and type right in your viewer on the edit page. That's not new in 20, but you know, some of you probably still missed it. And next is one thing I've only seen one person show off, and that is friend of the show Chadwick over at Creative Video Tips. Lots of you might have seen his video covering the release of Resolve 20. I will link it in the description if you haven't, but he talked about the vector warp tool. He promised to go more in depth later, and I probably will as well. I might wait to see how he goes in depth because he, the way he initially showed it off was very impressive. I did a quick mock-up, which hey, is not great, 
but it's this new sort of like warping tool deal. Skin, skin will be tough, but it's a really cool workflow um, that I want to explore more. And again, the example Chadwick showed is even much cooler and gives you a better idea of where this tool is headed. I didn't show it off at all, and I didn't see anyone else doing it other than Chadwick because it is a bit more involved and very fusion heavy, so uh, watch out <laughs> if you're not super in that world, because I'm not even super in that corner of the fusion world. But something I did want to uh, give a little more focus on. I'm sure I'll talk about that in some regard later. Next is one of the things I just got wrong in my video. If I hop over to this timeline and come to Timeline AI Tools, we have Audio Assistant. I did show this off, but our delivery standard is YouTube. If I click Audio Mix, it'll go through this process. These tracks will change color. This music will come down in volume a whole lot. That should happen pretty soon. There it goes. Now, while this is finishing up, um, I thought that it was doing a whole bunch of stuff, you know, especially behind the scenes and that that was kind of staying hidden because I did only look at the uh, audio mixer here on the edit page. But if we actually hop into the Fairlight, you can see the effects it added onto specific tracks. You can see dynamics and EQ, um, even effects it added onto the main output bus. Another friend of the show and Resolve Peep, uh, Jay Littman, told me about this and it's so cool. Not only does this actually give you back all the control of the changes the AI audio assistant made, but it's also an incredible learning resource. If you are new to this world of audio editing, you can run through this process and then open up Fairlight and just see what it changed. And you can sort of go through toggle effects on and off and sort of reverse engineer what the AI audio assistant thought was best and then make new choices for yourself. This is very cool. Next, um, actually was going to be part of my initial video. It, it was part of the video. Um, and then after I had exported it, I realized, oh, my initial understanding of this tool was completely wrong. So I cut that part out of the video before it went live. But that has to do with this option up here for Blackmagic Cloud folders. If I click this, I can select a demo folder I made. I will click add. It'll ask me where I want that stored on my local system. And if I click download, let's see what shows up. Hey, we have that demo folder here. We have that little cloud icon. I did right click to sync original media and we're getting one in here now. Um, and, oh, and now this icon shows that it is downloading probably the second uh, admittedly much larger clip, but I'm not getting that feedback in this actual menu. That might be a note I try to pass on if this is if this is a bug. But we have this first screen recording now, and this is a clip I can drop right on my timeline. This is another screen recording from a previous video. But the point of these Blackmagic cloud folders is sort of for like, half cloud editing. I saw a decent amount of people talk about one frustration with Blackmagic cloud editing is that to use that system, you need to always be online. But if you have a lot of footage from a project, you need to send to an editor who needs to access that footage inside the general like cloud landscape. And you might even need to repeatedly send them footage or send them new footage. If you make this a cloud project, then this is something that can sync to them. They can download the footage when they need it and then work completely offline. And then let me even see if I do something like drag this audio effect into this demo folder, uh, yes, if you drag any file back into that folder, then here it uploads, uh, it keeps all that media together. So this is a synced folder once it's open in your timeline. Oh, here's that other clip I did. Let's try to drag this on my timeline here. And this was from a single video. So if I uh, get rid of this second audio track, then I can drag these over to each other and boom, right click sync, audio sync, snap those up. And, uh, you know, this is a video I could be uh, set to edit anywhere in the world. And again, I am in project in my local database. So I'm not in a cloud project here, but this button to load a Blackmagic cloud folder is always here. I think to the right people, this would be extremely useful. And the last thing is one thing I uh, did touch on a little bit, but there's sort of a new development I wanna talk about. So we, we know we have these animated subtitles, right? Which can go word by word. They're very cool. And you can load these up in the Fusion page, but there's a few things I wanna show off. The first being um, that one of the new additions that make this tool work is over in the edit controls menu. We have this on change effect. This can execute a little bit of script or a little bit of code, a little bit of Lua, it's it's some of it's above me <laughs> every time any control is changed and it looks like that was essential for this new system to work I'm probably gonna link to two videos by Asher Roland who is a whiz at this stuff he's already broken down some really cool stuff and he has put out for just a few bucks sort of a starting point template for users to create their own presets and templates using this effect 
I'm definitely going to take a swing at it, stick around for, you know, maybe in a, a few days or so, I have a little entry level pack with some more different styles for you to check out. If that's the kind of thing you're interested in, um, absolutely check out his videos as well that will be linked in the description. Even in this little supplementary video, there's some really exciting stuff here in DaVinci Resolve 20. I haven't even started making specific videos about some of these specific bigger tools. We'll see what my video looks like um, when I want to talk about more of these sort of animated subtitles as well. It's, it's intense and very fusion heavy in some new and exciting ways. But, you know, stick around for that. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.